This is Selma Schimmel in Chicago at the AACR annual meeting. AACR is the American Association for Cancer Research. It's their annual meeting, and now we are being joined by Dr. Ada Yinka Leyamo, who is uh, Assistant Professor of Medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology in the Department of Medicine at Howard University College of Medicine. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for coming to talk to us because we really need to do some education and outreach to a particular patient population. And in this case, we're going to talk about the increased colorectal, colorectal cancer burden amongst African Americans. And we're going to touch on access, utilization of, of services and medical care, and the biology. We find that the biology of cancer can differ amongst patient populations. Being a gastroenterology, a gastroenterologist, I focus more in, on colorectal cancer. Now, one of the things we notice is that you have uh, the African American community has the highest incidence and highest rate of deaths from colorectal cancer. Um, but what is really troubling is the fact that colorectal cancer actually is one of those cancers that we know that you can prevent to a good extent, that there are many things you could do to reduce your risk. But unfortunately, um, there has been suggestion that the rate is, you know, of cancer deaths and incidents is going down. We continue, that is lagging behind in the African American community. So my research has been focusing on understanding why this is and what we can do. Do you think that the likelihood is it is underutilization of screening or actually a different biological characteristic of uh, colorectal cancer in this community? That's a great question. We actually don't know the answer <laughs> because it's, the problem is multifactorial. There are multiple things uh, moving at the same time. First, we know that African Americans are less likely to be screened. Um, majority of the patients um, that at least a lot of people don't have insurance and colorectal cancer screening is an elective procedure meaning it is something is not an emergency so if you don't have a doctor or if you don't have insurance the likelihood is that you won't get screened so that's one angle to it but also some studies have shown that African Americans tend to get colon cancer at younger ages, that they are also more likely to die from colon cancer, which also, and then they are more likely to have right-sided um, tumors. All these things point also that there may be some differences in the biology. But understanding the differential contributions, that which one is contributing more, uh, can be challenging because many of the studies don't cut across all these parameters to actually look. Is the, the average age, recommended screening age in the U.S. is 50. 50. For a patient population that might be at higher risk, would you like to see screening maybe at 45? The, actually, the American College of Gastroenterology and the uh, ASG, American Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, both came up with the recommendation that African Americans um, should begin screening at age 45. Uh, because of the increased um, prevalence of colon cancer and, and the deaths from colon cancer in this population. And every five years, what is your guideline for higher risk patients? The, for the average risk patient, let's go with uh, the average risk patient, which is where most people will belong. Mm -hmm. If you get a colon cancer screening, uh, it depends on modality. So I'll focus on, if it is colonoscopy, which is the Gold more common uh, these days. If it is negative, that is no polyp was removed, you come back in 10 years. Okay. Now, for those who have family history of colon cancer, then, especially in the first degree relative, that is your dad, your mom, or your brother or sister, then those people, you have them to come back in five years. For other people, it's a function of what type of polyp was removed. If it was a small polyp, you know, that doesn't show those um, advanced changes, as we like to call them, then the person can come back within five to ten years. If it's less, if it's just one or two that was removed. If you have three 
or it's a big polyp, then we say they should come back in, um, in three years. Okay. So, but if, but for the screening modality, because um, using stool test is also acceptable, but that one is to be done every year. So if you are getting stool test, mm -hmm. uh, which is non-invasive, then you're supposed to be screened every year. Dr. Le Leemo, now that we've discovered that there is a uh, type of genetic mutation, that BRCA mutation, uh, a derivative in African Americans, and we know that it can also lead in addition to breast and ovarian, prostate and colorectal cancer, is there any connection in your mind that there are perhaps other mutations like BRCA that could increase one's risk in this patient population for colorectal cancer? That's a great question. Um, the thing is that has not been clearly defined. Uh, there has been some studies comparing African Americans to the uh, white population and comparing things like looking at um, microsatellite instability, looking for KRAS mutation, BRAF, you know, all those things, they, they suggest that there may be differences, but if we drill it down in terms of what we benefit people at this point in time the most, I think we need to take care of them getting access to even get screening in the first place and ensuring that those who have health insurance, that they actually use them. Because it doesn't do anybody any good if we are worrying about when they get cancer, how do we treat them? When we can intervene early on to ensure that they don't even get to the point of cancer. So um, yes, there are a lot of studies ongoing to try and see if um, genetic markers and, or molecular biology differences can explain some of this. How much of an issue do you think trust is? We've talked about this a lot with the African American community in the perception of healthcare and that trust is such a huge issue that keeps people away from utilization. It may play a role, but I guess getting, getting the education to the people. You see, education, 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 and making sure that we facilitate them coming to the hospital can really make a big difference. And of course, if we are able to reach one person, whether it is the wife, the husband, or the children, and they are advocates in the family, because it's a whole lot easier than when somebody from outside okay, is talking to them as well. Everybody that can say a word should talk about colon cancer screening. Because, I mean, and I totally understand that. Anybody that can speak to anybody about it should, should, should do so. And in my talk this morning, I actually said that at the Thanksgiving dinner, we should bring it up because you have all the family members there. I think the issue is if we, the more we talk about it, the more people will understand the need for it. So for our viewers that are listening saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that, give us your closing thought. Well, what I would say is this. Yes, it can be one of those things that we don't want to think about, but this is one of those few things in medicine that we realize from good studies that these things can save life. Um, yes, maybe one day you won't eat solid food because the doctor will ask you to be on clear liquid diet before your colonoscopy, and they make you drink this gallon of good stuff that may not taste the best of what you've tasted in your life. Um, but we are getting better at that as well anyway. But the issue is this, if you get the colonoscopy, you can be comforted that you've done your part. Exactly. And that's the key thing. And after your colonoscopy, you actually feel Lighter? so, oh yes, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Great way to start a diet. <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you, Dr. Adienka Leamo. Nice talking to you too. Pleasure.